Hi, welcome to this Fiat Day, uh, which is on the uh, 23rd of May. We are on Saturday. We're going to be giving our update and outlook and forecast for the Euro today. We're going to look at the Euro against uh, the USD. Also, we're going to look at uh, Euro JPY. And finally, we're going to look at a Euro correlated currency, which is the CZK. So USD CZK as well. We'll go over, take a look at all the charts in just a moment. Now, in terms of our view of the Euro, uh, we've held the same view for a good few months, the euro has got limited upside and potentially really big downside. Now, in terms of the euro breaking to a big sustained downtrend, that has not happened yet, okay? But if you look at euro rallies, they've been failing, they've been failing in a certain way, which makes us very bearish. I'll discuss that in a bit more detail when we get to the charts. Now, in terms of why we think the euro is gonna break down hard, um, yeah, the, the probability is high, is all to do with the economic crisis in Eurozone. There's an economic crisis across the world, but in Eurozone, it's particularly serious because some nations are way weaker than others. Now, in terms of addressing this, um, the French and the Germans have proposed a 500 billion rescue fund for the poorer nations. I've seen a lot of talk in the media about this being an historic event, Eurozone coming together to fight the pandemic. Uh, we do not share the optimism about this fund at all, even if it is approved, and we think the likelihood of it being so are pretty low. There's not enough money in it. You know, they need a lot more than 500 billion in that fund. Now, the reason they need a lot of money, or a lot more money than that, is because they've got two big nations that could potentially go down, they could go bankrupt. They are Italy or Spain, okay? They could both go down in our view. Now, in terms of just discussing all this in more detail, obviously I'll do it when we get to the charts. We'll round up the fundamentals, uh, go through the key technical levels. Um, but just before we go to the charts, obviously just please do keep in mind, yeah, it's obviously my view as of this specific moment in time. It could of course change in line with the market action and conditions if you want all our trading techniques our daily technical sentiment analysis of 14 forex pairs all you need to do is click on the link beneath this video and you can get live access to our member center you can also follow us on facebook and join our facebook group if you wish right now what we are going to do is we're going to go and take a look at the trade setup so we're going to start with the euro against the usd right euro usd daily chart in terms of the technical picture of the last few weeks not too exciting is it just kind of gentle action low volatility you can see that by how tight the Bollinger Bands are so if you're looking at purely technical you think that's oh, pretty boring at the moment when you look at the um, fundamentals and sentiment behind the chart you can see the reason why we could get higher volatility volatility sorry the big move to the downside. Um, so I'm just going to go through these points here very quickly before I draw my technical levels. Now, Eurozone has been hit hard by the virus, as of all economies in the world, haven't they? But Eurozone has a unique problem. It's not a monetary union, it's just simply a political union. And within the zone, there are nations that are doing okay. I mean, no nation's doing well, but okay in relation to the pandemic and others that are on the verge of bankruptcy. Italy and Spain are both in danger of going down. They've got high debt levels, high unemployment, low productivity. And here's an interesting uh, fact I found on the net the other day. 10% um, of small and medium sized businesses were bankrupt at the end of March, never to return. That's going to increase to 30% uh, by the final quarter of the year. It's a massive amount of businesses going bankrupt, isn't it? Yeah, so you know, basically huge problems within the countries. Uh, Italy and Spain, I could throw in, they've got weak banks as well. Now, there is a real threat of bankruptcy, and you know, France and Germany have come up with an idea. They've come up with a proposal for a 500 uh, billion euro rescue fund. Actually, it's 545 billion. And the media's got excited about it, saying you know, this could really help solve the problems in the eurozone. No. Um, the fund is too small. A lot of serious analysts and economists have said that Italy alone could need up to a trillion dollars just to survive the year. It's got 500 billion. Well, that's half that Italy might need, but 
that's not just for Italy, you've got Spain in, a good few other nations as well. 500 billion is too small. Now, we have said uh, previously we felt, yeah, yeah, the fund was unlikely to get approval, okay? And that's coming into play today with the Frugal Four announcing that they oppose it. The Frugal Four in Eurozone are Austria, Sweden, Netherlands, and Denmark. Um, they're opposed to debt sharing. They do not want to give money to the poorer nations, just give it to them. They prefer it to be loans. The poorer nations are saying that everyone should stick together in Eurozone. So you've got a real division between the rich and the poor. Now, in terms of the Frugal Four, they can actually point to this fact, uh, which is debt sharing is actually prohibited by the Maastricht Treaty that formed the EU. And Germany actually had that clause put in. Seng says outside the Maastricht Treaty, uh, we don't agree. Now, of course, things could change in Eurozone. They could say, yeah, we all want debt sharing. But they've all got to agree. OK, so of these four nations, even if three yeah, had second thoughts and say, yeah, OK, we'll give the money in the way the rescue fund proposes, you need one to oppose. I don't see three changing their mind. OK, so I, th I just don't think it's going to get approval. Also, the Frugal Four will have their eye on what's been going on in the German High Court. The German High Court have ruled, let's just do the ECB doing stimulus, have acted illegally or outside of their mandate in terms of they did stimulus. They've asked the ECB to explain themselves within a time period. And uh, if the German court basically don't like what they hear, they're going to advise the Bundesbank to quit stimulus. Now, there's another court case coming in relation to EU finances. Um, and that is probably going to involve the rescue fund. And do you think the German court are going to think the rescue fund is a good idea? Well, they don't even think ECB stimulus is a good idea. Um, they're going to be scathing of it, in our view. So a lot of divisions in Eurozone, obviously. It's not big, happy families, we said, on numerous occasions. So I think, you know, it's bearish, you know, this financial dispute, for want of a better term. Also, in terms of Eurozone, uh, or our bearish view of the Euro, my apologies, uh, commercial smart money, uh, are our favourite sentiment, the CO sentiment tool, the COT net trade positions. Um, commercials heavily short, speculators heavily long. Uh, we're with the commercials in terms of our view, obviously. Also, we get some risk off. That's bearish for the Euro. We've had risk on, haven't we? With a lot of optimism. Um, about a V-shaped global recovery, the worst is behind us, the EC Rescue Fund is a great idea, all the rest of it. Um, the worst is ahead, in our view. Um, so risk off will boost um, the USD, or push the euro down. But even without, um, you know, big risk off, I, I just can't see any upside for the euro. You're always going to push it higher. Just can't see anything. Of course, stranger things have happened, but uh, for me, <laughs> Euro, not much upside. Now, in terms of Euro rallies, you've got that one there. Gets above the 20-day moving average, the green line. Can't get away from it, fades back. Come above the 20-day moving average again. Can't get away from it, fades back. Same, same. Each rally, decreasing volume. So the rallies are not banked by big volumes. So there's not really that much buying interest in the euro. There's not a huge selling interest yet, but I think um, the big volumes will come in um, and the euro is going to break down. Now, in terms of technicals, um, oh, let me do my downside targets first of all. Won't do the monthly chart in this video, but we've got 104.50. Then the par level, we get to par, that's um, about 900 pips lower, but I think we could overshoot. 280 if things get really toxic in eurozone which i think they're gonna do now in terms of technical levels we're at 109.60 in the member center nothing moved so far just 62 pips but i think it become sorry could become a meaningful move now in terms of uh this rally here uh exhaustion no buying interest came back through 
Come, test the level on that blue. Go through just no buying interest. So we got a high above that high. Then we close lower than the open of the blue. So I can draw a trajectory. So there. And now this red has basically filled that blue body. And we're above the 20 day moving average. Now, my own view is values back to 110, selling opportunities. Let me get rid of that line. Sorry. Uh, values back to 110 are selling opportunities. And I think we go through this 20 day moving average, which you can see 108.98, get clear of the round number, only two pips below it, get 20 pips below the round number, and I think we'll sell off to the downside. So, yeah, 108.80. Um, and see if she runs. Uh, in terms of, you could wait for the 108 level to give way. There's quite a bit of support there. I'd rather be early getting in, get through 108, new chart lows, and then we'll see if we gain traction to the downside. Now, in terms of a stop, don't need too, too wide a stop, I don't think. I think I'm going to use that level there. So I'm going to say back behind here. That's just basically where we broke up very briefly, immediately faded back, body, body, down. So not too much of a stop. You could probably be uh, 110.80, do it, 110.60. I've got a stop a little bit higher than that, but I'll bring it down from the member centre on Monday. Just see if she runs to the downside. Um, so yeah, bearish of Euro USD. And I also really like the look of Euro JPY, which we're going to shift over to right now. So let's go and take a look at the chart. All right, uh, Euro JPY uh, daily chart. And just for the last two pairs, I'm going to use the charts for our member center. Now, in terms of the Euro fundamentals, we've looked at them. They're clearly bearish for us. What about yen fundamentals? Well, we view the yen, this is a longer term perspective. It's very oversold historically. And also we're expecting risk off, so that would benefit the yen, it's number one safe haven currency. Now, the euro did have a nice big fall there, a little bit of a rally. This rally comes up and you've got risk on in the markets and enthusiasm about the rescue fund. Um, obviously, we didn't share the enthusiasm about the rescue fund and we've just sold it into 118, just hit it right at the round number on the view that obviously a lot of order flow around round numbers. We didn't there be many buy orders above the 118 level. Got through it on that candle, slightly on that candle. This candle tail makes a new near term high. We slump back, close below the previous close. And now we followed on, covered that candle. Did finish off the lows. Um, yeah, we've got nothing profit in this one so far, just 70 pips. But I'm hoping it's going to become a big profit. I'm probably going to add to this one if we go through this level here. Okay, those two bodies. Now, in terms of the two bodies, um, if we clear them in that tail, 116.80, other side of the round number, see if she runs. Okay, risk reward on this trade, really good. Longer term, we're looking for 110, then 100, their monthly support level. So 1700 pips there, obviously a long term target. But even if we get to chart lows, it's a decent risk to reward trade. It's only been risked to 119.30. So if you're coming in fresh, you like the bearish side of the euro, back to 118 or through 116.80. Um, and I'm looking, hopefully, uh, for a big rundown next week. Now, in terms of this pair, it's one we've been focused on for a year and a half. It's been our favorite pair to hit the euro on rallies, whenever you see a good risk reward trading opportunity, it's actually been our top performing pair over that period. Um, I hope you know I'm not going to curse the trade there when I've said that, but we shall see. I, I'm really uh, obviously bearish. So yeah, long way to go on the downside. Let's finish up uh, with the Euro proxy, which is obviously going to be USD, CZK. Got a bit of a channel going on, low volatility, not too much going on pure technical perspective, you know, it's not that exciting, but I think, it, yeah, like the euro, it's going to get hopefully a little bit more exciting. Um, we've come in at 25, so basically our entry 
didn't think the bottom of the channel would give way. We came down, waited for some basing, long, and now I think we go up and break the chart highs. Just don't see much downside in this pair. And then I think we are going to go on to, see it here, 28, then 30. So a way up here, okay. If you're bearish in Europe, you say this frequently, sell a Euro proxy. If the Euro goes down hard, the Euro proxies will go down harder. Pick the most um, overbought Euro proxies against the USD. In our view there, the USD, sorry, the CZK and the PLN. Um, got a lot of debt, massively exposed to Eurozone. They're basically emerging market currencies that did have interest rate support until recently. Uh, very overbought historically on the dollar. Dollar, long way to go to the upside. Yeah, you can go and take a look at the Polius Lotti setup if you wish as well. Uh, very similar. But um, yeah, obviously we are bearish of the euro and uh, the markets over the last few weeks have been fairly low volatility. Um, but I think we're in for another bout of high volatility. And obviously I think the USD, JPY, going up on the euro and the CZK going down on the USD. Yeah, we will see what happens. But uh, that is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me as usual. Take care. Have a good day.